Nothing to see here. Just a really nice 2020 Ram. 3500 Laramie. So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do a video on the air suspension for a Ram 3500. So, this truck is a 2020. I've never had a chance to test it out on a one ton or Ram 3500, so we're gonna do that today. But let's go ahead and take a look at the window sticker so you guys can see how much it costs and what comes with it. Okay, so the truck we're looking at today is a Laramie Crew Cab. And it has a lot of options on it, to be honest. I guess not a lot, it just has a lot of expensive options. I guess is the best way to put it. But check this out here. You do have the diamond black crystal pearl, 100 bucks. Now this does have the bucket seats on this truck too. And towing technology group. So this does not have the 12 inch display, but it does have the cameras on the mirrors. This is a pretty unique option truck because typically with the Laramie, with these options, you would probably see the 12 inch display, but they did option with that. And that's actually not a bad thing. But Laramie level two is a, another expensive option. This does have the high output Cummins. And as you guys can see, automatic level rear air suspension is 1705. I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how much it costs for a 2021. So here's the option for the air suspension. It's right below. So this is 1705, so they have not increased the price of it for 2021. However, if you are looking at a 2021, the base price of the Laramie to go up from 539 to 5485. All in price with this truck, it is 77,795. Now, one thing I will say is this truck does have unique options. But one thing I would have probably would have wanted to see at almost 80 grand is probably some running boards, at least the power deployables. Now, as you guys can see, you do have the cameras. You have two on each mirrors and one in the front grill. You do have the reverse lights for your trailer when you're backing up too. And the camera does show you an angle on the side of the truck on each side. Now, out back, this little prep package, spray and bed liner. You do have the LED lights in the bed, as well as the top of the camera. And they do give you a camera out back just above your tongue here. So this is gonna be a class five receiving hitch. We are gonna be using this today. And like I said, we'll be hooking up my trail now. This is gonna be a new truck. We cannot tow with it. We're just gonna be hooking up just to show you guys how this air suspension works. If you are looking at a lot of Ram trucks on a lot, sometimes you can't really tell right away whether or not a truck has the air suspension, but Ram does give you a sticker on the back window that says ram air suspension that's one way you can tell you also have a sensor back here now if you're looking at three quarter ton trucks you're not going to see these leaf packs they do give you three on this side and it looks like they give you four on this side here but you see this little plastic piece here this is like a sensor and that's one way you can tell obviously you can go out back and you can see the airbag right there it's right next to the leaf springs it's just in front of the shop too if you can see it there but this is going to be a better riding truck overall having that uh, air suspension i do notice a difference when i drive the trucks at lower speeds it is a little bit like harsh but when you're just cruising around it definitely does help overall with the ride as far as the engine options go you can get the air suspension with any of them you have the 6.4 which is the v8 you also have a standard Cummins, and what you're looking at here is gonna be the high output with the Eisen. It's gonna be good for 400 horsepower, 1,000 pound-feet of torque. If you're comparing 2021s, they did up the power for the high output to 1,075, 420 horsepower. Let's go ahead and add the hitch onto this truck. I'm gonna drop the weight down on it, and we're gonna just kinda of check out the squat. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put the camera off to the side, and I'm gonna see if the bed will lower in the past i haven't been able to get it to work so let's try it out now i'm gonna go inside the truck actually first before we set the camera to the side here so what you have to do is you have to go to apps and you're going to scroll over and you'll see one more time my hands are so cold i can't seem to get this to slide well but right there you can see the bed lowering and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hit this button And then the truck is supposed to lower down. Now, I don't know if it happens or not, so we're gonna put the camera outside to see if it happens, okay? And I'll give a thumbs up once I push the button. So I'm gonna push it again. 
It's saying lowering, but it's supposed to be raising because I just turned it off. Now they also have buttons here, alternate trailer height, which is right here. I don't know if you guys can see that from that far away, but there it is, alternate trailer height. And I'm gonna push that button now. And so selected ride height, not permitted due to payload. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera outside and like I said, I'm going to show you guys the bed lowering and see if it happens. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the weight of the trailer on the truck. That way you have a better idea of how the system's gonna work, okay? The good news is we have a lot more tongue weight. We have a lot of stuff in the front of the uh, cabinets there. So we probably have at least 100 pounds of tongue weight. Now I normally add it right here, but I'm gonna let it sit out just a little bit more. Just because I want a little bit more tongue weight. I think that if I put it out further, we should get some tongue weight from that too, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pin to lock it in and then we'll hook it up. I figured it's a good time to show you guys the camera views here really quickly. I'm gonna just pull up this ever so slightly. All right, we're gonna go in reverse and we're gonna use this camera view right here. And then you have these side views as I mentioned. Hold on, let's just, let's turn this off. And so you can move it to the left or to the right. I haven't really done this with the smaller screen, but it gets the job done still. And then this is the one we're gonna be following. So I have the hitch already installed. They do give you the line in the middle here, which helps a lot. And so you can kind of turn it just a little bit and boom, it is under. You can zoom in too. I'm just gonna pull up just a little bit so that you can see it. Alright, so this camera view out back and right here. So that way you can see me go under it again. Alright. Right there. And I'll hit the e-brake and that's it. Alright guys, so we're gonna try to bed lower it to see if it will lower down the bed, okay? I don't know if you saw anything happen just now, but uh, like I said, I did hit the bed lowering. I don't know if it's doing anything though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a load on the truck here. And then we're gonna turn the truck off because I want the truck to have a little bit of squat so we can see it working, okay? Let's just take a second to admire how good this black truck looks in front of my black trailer. This thing looks so good. And yeah, I might get a black truck next because every time I hook up a black truck to any trailer I own, I'm like, man, this looks so much better than a white truck. But nevertheless, guys, did you see this truck squat even a little bit? I guess I gotta edit the footage when I get home because it looks level. So I don't know if the suspension is gonna even level out. What I'll have to do is, whenever we move out of our RV into a house, I'll have to use my fifth wheel again because I feel like using 25, 2600 pounds does put a little bit more weight on the truck, which will make it squat a little bit more. So hopefully in time we'll do that. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to put the camera down and I'm going to turn the truck on and I'm going to see if it alternately raises or lowers. Alright guys, I'm going to pull forward just a little bit. So I can hear the air suspension doing something. 
I'm gonna hit alternate trailer height. It's saying lowering. I feel like it's doing something now. Okay, I think it's lowering. Yeah, it's taking a little bit longer time to do anything right now. Oh, so selected right height, not permitted due to payload. So it's still saying the same thing. So we're gonna go back through here. And let's see, lower bed. Okay, let's go outside and check everything out again, okay? All right, guys, so I don't know if anything happened. I can't really tell, but nevertheless, I guess you just need more pin weight than a thousand, and it's probably about 1,100 pounds with all the stuff in front of my trailer. Maybe what I'll do is maybe one day I'll come back, I'll unstrap my car, and move it all the way on the front just to give it more tongue weight. That should put about 2,000 pounds of tongue on this truck, but I don't know, we'll see. I still think that this suspension is a good option if you do a lot of traveling, especially if you do like full-time RVing or something like that. This truck rides so good unloaded. And I think that having the air suspension is gonna definitely, it just made a sound just now. But the air suspension is gonna definitely make a difference when you're pulling the big trailer. But it's doing something. I just don't know if you guys are able to see anything happen. But the system's easy to use. There's like two ways you can do it. As I showed you, you can click the button on the, on the front dash right there, or you can go through the screen and you can do bed lowering, okay? I hope this was helpful. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe to my channel, guys. You know I have to show you the payload, right? Before I do any video, I always try to do that. I rarely forget, but I have forgotten on a few other videos and I apologize but let's do it right now. So with the air suspension on a Laramie, 4,037 pounds. Woo, that is a big number. Now this truck does have a 12,300 pound GVWR. So any long bed truck that you buy, that's a one ton or mega cab, you get 12,300 pounds. If you get a short bed crew cab, it's 11,800 pounds. So they do drop it just a little bit for you. So you gain 500 pounds with a long bed and a mega cab. And then of course your gross axle in the front is gonna be 6,000 pounds, see right there? And then 7,000 for the rear. Whenever I get a three quarter ton, I'll use that truck as a good comparison again. I don't know if the heavy duty one tons are a good example to use because this is such a stiff suspension. It truck didn't really squat that much. so figure about 1100 pounds of tongue your truck's gonna ride pretty normal but again i hope this was helpful guys be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you soon since you stayed to the end i'm gonna put the camera really close to the hitch i have the tongue jack slightly on the uh, stands here, the little yellow pads, or whatever you want to call them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if the truck will do a bed lowering. If it does the bed lowering, maybe, just maybe, it will drop down low enough so we can unhook without having to use the jack. All right? Okay, so it did lift it up. So did you guys just see that? All right, cool. I'm gonna let it go back down again. So it was actually already a bed lowering. So I'm going to lower it back down. But before I do that, let me just put my jacks here down just a little bit more. All right. All right, we'll just do it about right there. Hopefully it will clear it, okay?
right, so I don't think it did anything, but never mind. See you guys soon.